Hello, everyone, and welcome to I've Read It, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Wednesday, May 17th, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Please remember, everyone, that you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet if you'd like to help us out financially so that we can do more episodes a week and just keep the thing running because, uh, well, that's hard to do sometimes. Anyway, Nathan, how are you today, sir? Pretty good. Oh, huh. What's wrong? Uh, sorry, I said the broadcast had been interrupted. Um, pretty good. I mean, my guts hate me because, like, I totally drank a frappuccino and it was delicious. And full of milk? Yeah. How lots, you... lots and lots of milk. Did you take a lactate? No. I was at work and it didn't have any. You should buy a box of lactate for work. Uh, I mean, I could just take the box that I have to work, but that requires effort. Maximum effort, dude. Hashtag yeah, Deadpool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely maximum effort. I don't know if I have that much effort in me. Maximum effort is damn near no effort for you? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, how was your day? Did you go all right? Um, yeah, it was pretty pretty smooth all day. Um, I don't know. I was in the back doing just, you know, whatever. That sounds super riveting. That's That's it was, amazing. It was pretty chill. Yeah. I feel like I got quite a bit of work done, though, so, you know, it was good. That's good. That's good, because there's always more work, right? Uh, I mean, always. We're like, we're like a fucking <laughs> have a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that Is was that a thing? Is that a thing? I need to know if there's a podcast named The Podcast. The Podcast. Uh, yes, there is The Podcast. Got it. Yeah, figured. I mean, that's it's 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 on SoundCloud. They only have eight episodes, and the last one was out four months ago. That's depressing. It is a podcast about cannabis breeding and cultivation for budding enthusiasts. Or that's was cool. I don't know. Can't really tell if it's still a thing or not since. First episode was nine months ago. Last episode was two months ago. So take with that what you will. Um, Jennifer, those lactates are not small pills. They are like tablets. They're like antacid tablets, really. What, what do you define as a small pill? Like your standard like uh, allergy pill? Like those are normally pretty damn tiny. I mean, yeah, kind of. And yeah, it, actually, yeah, those are pretty small. So what's a normal size pill then? Like a, a B vitamin or something? No, like an aspirin. But aspirin aren't that much larger than, like, I don't know. Here. Oh, he, he has them. He had them within reach. Yeah, I'll. Uh, I'll Not that anyone at home listening on their audio can hear, can see this. Okay. What he's about to hold so up. So this one. This one is not the ones that you have. You guys have different looking ones. This one is. Um, Are they like is, this? Is like a knockoff brand. So these ones are tiny. Oh, those aren't the, tiny. The ones you have are like wafers. Oh, okay. Those look like the size of like, I don't know, Tylenol. Yeah, about. I don't know if I'd call that a small pill. Yeah, that's lactase, fast I'd, acting. I'd, I'd call anything from like th that size up to like the size of like an Advil or a Dayquil like liquid gel. Those are all normal to normal size things. <laughs> Budding. <laughs> that's good. Anyway, shall we uh, shall we get into some some news some newsage? Yeah, sure. I guess. Did I drag that? I did drag that. I'm the I'm the worst. Uh, I, well, I don't think it'll let me fix it now. Oh God. Oh no! What'd you do? I I I, I, I don't. It, it it it's all dumb now. It's all dumb. Everything went dumb. Oh God, that's too small. That's too big. There we go. Got it. We're just gonna leave it right there and uh, move into this. There we go. Ten. Braggies, braggies, brag, bra braggies. Don't know. Braggies' new fancy earbuds translate for you in real time. This was submitted by Rainox Double O to our gadgets. So Braggy, which is the original creator of ear computers, so like things you know, like I mean, you've seen so many. Um, he's, he he had a penny. God damn it. So. You've seen, I'm probably, you see, they went all over the Facebook, the goddamn put an earbud in your ear and people can talk and it'll translate it into your yeah, language. Yeah, it was like the babble fish. Well, this is, the, Bragg is the original company that created those. Uh, no, that was created in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. God, I, why do you do the, why, why do you do this to me? 
Because I'm telling you, all of these things come from science fiction novels from the past. Waterbeds came from a science fiction novel. Waterbeds kill people. That's true. Screensavers came from that same very science fiction novel. Screensavers kill people. Do, do they? I, I, well, I mean, it, not not normally, but I mean, my brain went, well, I mean, if you have one of those like real flashy screensavers and someone has epilepsy, they might die. That's fucked up. <laughs> well... That's how 400 kids in Japan got seizures. Well, kind of. That Thanks, was Pokemon. Episode. But I watched that episode, and I'll tell you what, it gave me one fucking hell of a headache. I believe it. Anyway, so they, they created... Oh, shit, I don't remember the name of the goddamn product anymore. All I knew is it, Dash. It's called Dash is the name of the goddamn earbuds. And they created the Dash Pro. And what they are, they're just, they're just new fancy earbuds that you stick in your ear, and they do all kinds of neat stuff. And one of them is these ones, because like a lot of the ones you saw advertised on Facebook of the Babblefish effect, you have to speak slowly and clearly, and also the way that it would work is it would transfer like the information from, like it would it would speak into it, and then from there it'd send it to your phone, your phone would translate it, and then it would speak back into your ear, and it went on a huge delay. These, they have partnered with iTranslate to make that faster, to make it where it almost has no delay. And so you should be able to speak in real time and have someone, it almost be translated in almost real time. So you don't have to wait for it to hear what they say and push it back in and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, the live video interrupted for me again. I don't know. Well, yeah, mine did too. I also just got to say that we, we dropped a couple frames there for a moment. But I'm, my computer says it's running fine, so I'm not sure. Could be an internet thing. Could be a Facebook thing. Could be a problem with XSplit. Don't know. Anyway, we're going to keep going. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, and so these are just the new versions of those. Um, they've also been experimenting with gesture technology, which means that they don't want you to have to like open your phone to skip a song or to pause it or to answer a phone call. So instead, they're practicing and implementing ways for when these are in your ears for you to like jostle your head in order to do something. So like answer the phone, you know, nod your head to the right, hang up, nod your head to the left, skip a song, pause. So you have like a HUD kind of thing going on? No, no, no. It, 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 there is no visual. They're literally just earbuds that are in your ears that uh, respond to movements. Okay. Hmm. I think that's kind of cool. So, I mean, would you use these, Nathan? The The ones that translate? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I would. How much would you? Cool. How much would you be willing to pay for them? Um. Okay. Honestly, I, 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 I know you're broke as shit. So if you weren't broke as shit, if I weren't broke, I would probably pay like a thousand five maximum. Okay. So these two two thousand with a warranty, but it has to be a damn good warranty. How much do you think these cost? Um. Currently, they probably cost about nine hundred and fifty dollars. Well. You need to cut that number in half, and that's if you want a custom pair. Oh, man. So, I mean, so they will they will mold a set to your ear for $500, although a normal pair, I believe they said, was like $350. So, surprisingly cheap compared to what you were looking at. Yeah. Yeah. This is sick. Uh, I'd be interested to see just how quick the translation, because they say... That there's no delay, that it translates in real time, but I want to know what kind of real time are we talking here? Yeah, is it uh, like, is it immediate? Like, can is it essentially like speaking the native tongue? I don't know. Um, Jennifer, they said uh, Jennifer Cruz in the chat room says music cannot be listened to with no mov movement. What the hell? These earbuds actually have technology in them to recognize when you're doing a workout, so that your workout movements don't pause or stop or skip songs that's what they claim anyway that's cool i mean like a pause feature well I on mean, your on your controls well i mean because their idea is that you can use head gestures like nods or you know shaking your head left and right you'll look like a fucking crazy person but to control I, things uh, 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 but i'm sorry also... i'm trying to get back to that one song <laughs> yeah exactly but that they would wait what if you're bobbing your head to the song too much and it changes it well they claim that they have implemented things that are supposed to recognize those type of movements oh, okay i hope so that's what they say anyway now, I mean, how far these go, how good they are, is yet to be seen. This is the new one. I mean, because they released the first Dash earbuds in 2013, so 
they've had quite a while to uh, perfect it a bit. Um, if you want a non-customized pair, though, it is going to run you $329. That's not so bad. Eh, that's an expensive pair of headphones. Right, but these these are the headphones of the future, dude. It's true. I just need the future to not be so damn expensive. It's true. Uh, Josh in the chat room says, Can they correct the weird things I say in English and make them not weird things? Um, well, if... They can't fix what you say, but I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know what it would do if there was a, a bad translation. Like if, if there was like, I, cause I know some languages, we just don't share words. Like there's just not direct translation. So I don't know what it does in that case. I mean, what you'd want to do, Josh is go get, go look at the, I translate app. Cause that's who they've partnered with for this and see how that works. Is it a better translator than the Google translator? I, I don't know. I would hope so. That thing's a piece of junk. No offense, but goddamn. Well, I mean, it does its job sometimes. Sometimes. The only sometimes. The, the 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 way that I check to see if Google Translate has given me a good translation is I have it translate and then I copy what it translated it into and then I switch the languages around and paste it in and see what it translates it back to me as. Yeah. And, like, more than half the time, there's something fucked up about it. Or just, like, that's not quite what I was going for. Yeah, you're like, that is not the tone and affliction I needed in that. Tone and affliction in text? Yep. Okay, well. Nine. FCC commissioner, quote, net neutrality is doomed if we are silent. This was submitted by Mavia to our technology. So one of the current current sitting commissioners on the Federal Communications Commission is speaking out about the importance of net neutrality. We are looking at one Mignon Clyburn. She is currently on the Mignon. M I G N O N Mignon Mignon. Mignon. Min Min No. Like filet mignon. No. I'm gonna go with no. Why not? Because I, I don't know. I just, I'm just i going to say no. Anywho, so the idea here being is that she is one of the people who are advocating for an open and free internet and is basically saying, look, the chair of the FCC of the board I sit on wants to take that away. If you don't want him to, you have to speak up. You have yeah, to make your voices it's, heard. It's French. It's mignon. Okay. And it, means, it means dainty, pleasing, gentle, kind. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, now oh, it's old French. Middle French is lover, darling, favorite. The commissioner has Google claimed Translate that, is cute. That over a million people have reached out uh, in regards offering their opinions about how the FCC FCC should handle net neutrality, um, and ninety six percent of those are in favor of open internet. Hmm. What is? What is what? Uh. I'm sorry. Andrew asked a question, uh, and I didn't know what Elon Musk's Neuralink idea is. Well, I'm something else. And yes, I do mean inflection. So what are your thoughts on net neutrality, sir? Uh, I'm kind of for it, you know? Yeah? Yeah. Did you send in your comment to the FCC yet? Not yet. Get on it. I have to have a rough draft of it and i really need to dwindle it down because there's a lot of expletives in it that's actually not such a bad thing well i i kind of wrote it when i was really drunk and i was i had the foresight when i was drunk to save it oh good job just remember everybody if you want to add your voice to the fcc's list of names of people that are either for or against net neutrality just go to gofccyourself.com and Go FCCYourself.com. And that'll take you directly... And one more time. Go FCC yourself, Michael. Without the Michael. Dot com. I already did. Um, and that'll take you directly to the page where you, you can make comments on this particular matter. Oh. Anyways, what's Elon Musk's Neuralink idea? Is, uh, is he, like, talking about... Uh, essentially an internet between people's heads maybe i don't know who elon musk has so many crazy ideas that i don't i don't know if i want to know let me know which ones he's actually working on and then i might care <laughs> but he likes to talk a lot about the things that he'd like to do and i care about more about the things that he's actually putting his billions of dollars into like blizzard loot boxes for him and his sons that's not his idea 
No, but he's been putting money into it. That's fine. I mean, hang on. What what is uh Blizzard enter Oh, I'm not typing anything. Dude, I hope it's, he's not putting money into Hearthstone packs cuz those are fucking expensive at least in Europe. What is the market cap of Blizzard Entertainment? Blizzard Entertainment is currently worth 41.14 billion dollars. So now Elon Musk net worth Ah, uh, not quite there yet, buddy. He is worth fifteen point three billion. Mm, close. So, so he can't quite just write a check for uh, for Blizzard yet. Almost. Almost. You're almost there, man. Just keep. Maybe that's his ultimate goal: is just buy buy Blizzard. Dude, that'd be a pretty sick goal. Well, I mean, when you have that much money, you gotta have some sort of goal, right? All right. Now we fire everyone in the Hearthstone development department. And bring in new people. Sorry, Ben Brode, but, like, your game kind of got shitty. Well, yeah. I, I, I mean, we can't say... who Who's the goddamn guy who runs uh, Heroes of the Storm? Because... Jeff something. Kaplan. Kaplan. Because he's took it a decent game and made it shitty, so... I don't know, dude. He's been really great with the community. Right. He's great. And he does a good job with the community. Now he just needs to do a better job on the game. That's all. I, I don't. I don't think the game's even that bad, though. I mean, sure, it's it's hit a rough patch in the meta right now with like Nathan four tank being meta. I have not heard you say a good thing about the game in the last like six months, and they keep making you play it for Overwatch stuff, and you bitch oh, every see, I'm time. I'm sorry, I was talking about Overwatch. Overwatch's name is Jeff Kaplan. Oh, I'm talking about Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, I, I misheard you. Okay. Because I was excited to play Overwatch. Well, you need to do podcasts first. Dude, it's alright. I have one more game in Heroes of the Storm, and I get ten loot boxes in Overwatch. Fuck, that was my thing of the day. All right, I'll think Seven. of you one. Wait, that's wrong number. Eight. Justice Department to appoint special counsel to take over Russian probe. This was submitted by DJ Noseman, our politics. So it's interesting because they said that they were originally not going to be looking into this, but I guess they uh, changed their mind. They decided against it. Well, and here's the interesting thing of who they have chosen to be the special counsel. They mm -hmm. are choosing former FBI director Robert Mueller. Mm -hmm. So this he's, is the dude who... the one that was... Um, he did, uh, he was working under, um, uh, Bush Jr., right? And Obama. Oh, yeah, and a little bit under Obama. Yeah, he is the, he, he, he is the... I guess up more than a little bit, it's 2013, I think, is when he stopped. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. most of Obama. Over half. Yeah. He's also... Most of, most of Obama. He's also the individual that has had the longest time leading the FBI with a total of 12 years. But he is being brought in as the independent party to continue the investigation on the Trump-Russia connections. That's some interesting shit. Yeah, I mean, of all the people, like, I don't know. Like, it, 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 it makes me feel like it's a good choice because he has worked under both Republican and Democratic um, administrations. And he is very familiar with the process. So it's a good choice. But mm -hmm. He's got experience. Something our president didn't have. Well, you don't have to have experience. It's not exactly something you throw on your resume. I don't know. I feel like you should have some kind of experience in some fields. Yeah, but what? You, there is literally no requirements for public office outside of get elected. That's fair. Like, any of them. Yeah, literally I guess, just that's, get uh, I guess that's ultimately a good thing, but you'd kind of hope that your president had at least a little bit of experience in the field first. Well, yeah, you'd hope so. But, I mean, it's the same problem why I have such a big issue with the legislature deciding both state and federal budgets. Because they're not budget people. They're just people that make decisions that are supposed to be representative of the populace. But they're not economists. They're, they're, not, they're, they're not accountants. I mean, maybe a couple of them are. But as a group they're making this group decision about the massive budgets on state and federal levels when that's not their area of expertise yeah uh, i don't know it drastically confuses i feel like confuses they should me. probably start hiring people who are who that's their more, job more, yeah like like who are accounts. trained to do that yeah because like i mean if you are if your budget in your house is fucked 
you can hire a friggin' accountant or an economist or a budget person that will fix it for you. But we never do that with state or federal budgets. They're just like, we'll take care of it because we're the, we're the fucking Congress. We can do it. Let's fuck that. Stupid. Stupid, stupid. Seven. Witcher series on Netflix confirmed. That's pretty cool. This is submitted by... Ter Fuck my... Oh my god. <laughs> to Termoac... To Termoactiv Kret to our Witcher. As well as submitted by Heisenhug to our television. So, The Witcher Saga, which a lot of younger people will know as a series of video games produced by CD Projekt Red. I didn't know this, but it was originally a book series. Oh, I didn't know that either. Yeah, it, there's eight books that are all devoted to The Witcher, and the video games are based on those books. That's super cool. Yeah, had no idea. But apparently, that's the case. And either the books or the short stories, there isn't a confirmation of which story it's going to be yet, is going to be produced into a series in the English language, which is wow. important because the books and the game are from Swedish authors and uh game developer companies it's going to be made in english on netflix wait a second what first they decided to pick up castlevania and now they decided to pick up the witcher netflix they're, they're making a yeah. castlevania series yeah they are oh cool and so this leads me to believe they're going to pick up more intellectual properties under under video games okay is there one particular that you want to see i don't know that's a new bag of questions well, I mean, you got excited. Is there something that jumped into your brain? No, I was just excited that there's going to be more video game movies that might not suck. Or video game TV shows, rather. Well, I mean... Oh, dude, you know what I want to see? I want to see Double Dragon. Why? Because of Bobo. I want to see him again, except better. That's not... No. What? It's... it. What? No. Okay, you can probably, like, put a Final Fantasy on there. Put, like, number four on there. Sure, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. But not Double Dragon. I mean, it, it's literally two I fucking love Double Dragon. A, a good bring game. Me a, bring a... me a live-action Battletoads TV show. And go watch one of the weird-as-fuck Ninja Turtle movies. What about Clash at Demon Head? I don't even know what that is. Wow. So that reference went over your head when you watched Scott Pilgrim. Probably. Actually, I have that. I have a, a Clash at Demon Head cartridge. I inherited it from my grandfather when he passed away. Like, I don't know. Maybe Final Fantasy, but I, I don't feel like I don't feel like that's a good choice either. Um, I don't know. Um, there might be some decent ones. It's got to be some decent ones. Like, here's the thing: is that like you got to pick one that doesn't get like because The Witcher is very like for all intents and purposes very down to earth. Like Bioshock, maybe. May ooh yeah that would be that would just be cool because I'd want to see them do it but again like it's so Kotor so out there I mean you'd have to talk to Disney about Kotor yeah yeah you would because I but think... I mean th that's fine you could talk to Disney they're, they're working with Marvel right now that's true trying to think of um of what else would would work well because if you go too crazy too outlandish then Mass Effect. It well, yeah, well, maybe. I mean, with the, there are some shows that are in that vein that are doing all right right now. Ooh, Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, Zach ooh, in the ooh, chat ooh. room. Red Dead Redemption. Ooh. That would be a a good one. Although that, that uh, got me really hard. I mean, rolling off of Westworld. I realize they're not at all the same, but Westworld has kind of that Western aesthetic aesthetic to it. So live action Pokemon TV show. Ooh. Live action Digimon. <sighs> yeah. You need something with better story, dude. Um, let's see. What other good video games are there? I'm looking around my room trying to figure it out. Um, Jack and Dexter, maybe? Like, stuff that is... Well, well first off, it need to be something that's easier to produce. Because, Double like, as cool, cry. as cool as, like, Mass Effect is, like, that would be a difficult production budget because of, like, so many aliens and stuff. It's difficult. Dude, Devil May Cry, dude. You just gotta do the demons and the jump special effects. I feel like the story and like the it's and for a game, Devil May Cry is a wonderful game. But in terms of like watching it on TV, like I don't I don't need to watch. Have the, you watched the anime? No, there's an anime. Yeah, there's like a four episode OVA series. Oh, okay. Yeah, they do those a lot for different games. 
It's pretty good, actually. Like, almost every Tales it. game gets, like, a four-episode OVA. Yeah. Let's see, what else? Uh, Monster Hunter would be a cool one. So, Jennifer in the chat room says God of War. And that would be a great one. Well, here's the thing, right? Is it God of War, the stories are actually very short. The games are only made long by you having to go through levels infinitely chopping things up. Ah, uh, yeah, that's fair. And I don't want to watch, like, as badass as it would be, I don't want to watch Kratos for 20 minutes just killing things that have no purpose. Yeah. Ah, oh, Diablo. Andrew Walters. That's a great one. Hmm. That would be a sick story. Ah, ah, who would you who would you cast for Deckard Kane? Um, Ian McKellen. There you go. Diablo. Yeah. Ian McKellen. He's just that one of those go-to old guys right now. That got me really excited. Is there any others that Zach says Red and Evil? Ah, I mean, maybe. I, I wouldn't Metro mind 2033. I, I wouldn't mind following somebody who isn't friggin' Alice. Because no, I'm, of course not. All of those Resident Evil movies, like they don't really tie into the the fucking the video games at all. You just scrap all of those movies all together and you restart, reboot it straight from the video games, and you do only the video game stuff. Alice was not anywhere in the video games. Like everything with Leon. Well, I mean, we're we're sort of already getting that with uh, Resident Evil Vendetta. Ugh, come on. What? No, they they tease small little bits of things, right? Vendetta's different. Vendetta's the 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 um the animated one, the CGI one, right? Yes. They've done the CGI ones, but they tied into the video games. The live action ones don't tie into the video games. Okay. Parasite Eve would be really good. Mm. That's a good idea, Jennifer. I mean, eh, you could go with something like uh like Lunar if you wanted another RPG. Yeah, I I mean, that'd be an alright one. Fuck it, do Chrono Trigger and do all of the different endings. Motherfucker, yes. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I, I think Nathan liked that suggestion. I really did. I'm going to open my Steam and just try to figure out a game. Well, we're going to move on in the meantime. Six. This The 22-year-old Brit who stopped the global cyber attack is donating his $10,000 reward to charity. This was submitted by Gemma J123 to our uplifting news. So yeah, we talked about it a couple days ago. It was the malware called WannaCry. Oh, it was the ransomware that held your computer hostage. If you didn't pay them three hundred dollars in Bitcoin, they would wipe your computer. He managed to basically accidentally shut that down by buying and registering the domain that that information was filtered through. As a such, I mean, there is rewards to, like, good-sided hackers, like people that find and report vulnerabilities and things or shut down um, malicious content. And so his reward was going to be $10,000. He says, okay, I don't need that because that's not what we do this for. But I will take most of it and give it to charity, and the rest I'm going to use to buy educational books for people who want to get into this that can't afford them. That's awesome. Uh, some uh, another company offered him uh, a year or wait a year or more worth of free pizza, and he's like, I probably will that take that one because free food is awesome. Hell yeah, it is. God, I miss I miss having free pizza. That was a good time. So yeah, I mean, thank you for stopping down a whole bunch of ransomware. Yeah. Because people suck. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, no. This guy, this guy's doing. This guy's doing. Good man's work. Hopefully Good he continues to do so, work. or just yeah. people stop being dicks. Yeah. Where are we? Number five. Five. Inmate who lived upstanding life after he was mistakenly freed wins release. This was submitted by Cyanocytiet Procyon to our news. So we had actually talked about this guy like over a year ago um, because... 
what happened was, if you remember the story, this dude got arrested, was going to be in jail for his entire life. He had a 98-year prison term for armed robbery of two video stores. And then he was just released. And he was like, oh, sweet, awesome. And so he was released, and that, that he was released back in 2008 improperly, but he was released back in 2008. And then he was like, okay, cool, I'm free. Uh, that sucked because that was 16 years of my life that I just lost. Let's, uh, let's move on from that. So he got married, he got a job, he got a house, he has kids, and he's like this amazing member of society. And then they, they found out, oops, you weren't supposed to be let out of prison, but it was a procedural error that caused you to be let go, and they rearrested him. To serve out... Up, yeah. yeah, to serve out the rest of his term. And it's like, motherfucker, what? But... They made a plea of, look how good this guy has become. He's completely rehabilitated his life. He's a member of the community. He helps out kids. He's got a good job. He's got a good family. And with that plea, he is now being set free, and the rest of his time is going to be just dropped. Good. It shows that the system sometimes does work. Well, and also, like... God, I, I would be I would be so mad at our legal system if they threw him back in prison after he has spent... You know, sit, sit nine years now proving that he's a good person. Yeah. Like, that. I, oh, God. That'd be riot worthy. Yeah. I'm also, like, they, they don't have the details of the case, but 98 years for robbing a goddamn fucking blockbuster? Yeah, that's pretty fucking crazy. That's, well, I mean, he robbed two of them, but fucking still. I mean, they're not even around anymore. Well, I, it doesn't say they were blockbusters, two video stores, but I'm fucking calling it blockbuster or, or Hollywood no, video. They could have been a, a mom and pop store. Could have been Hastings, I guess. Either way, I don't care which one you choose. Ninety-eight years? Yeah. No. Shit. That's no. Don't fuck around with movie stores. I guess. Holy shit. I mean, even if you robbed them at gunpoint, like, there are people that do hor- There are people that murder groups of people and serve less time. Yeah. As Zach said, those FBI warnings are nothing to mess with. But that's only if you copy the videos. This that's is like robbing them in a way. I mean, if you want to get into the piracy discussion, we totally can. But we both I know which side of the fence we both fall on that one. I have never pirated a single thing in my life, sir. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! Fuck <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Anyway, moving on. Four. EU warns Turkey after it violates Greek airspace 141 times in one day. This was submitted by Groudon 466 to R Not the Onion. Turkey, <laughs> fucking put put it away. Nobody wants to deal with your shit right now. You're pissing off Greece. You're pissing off the un your, the European Union. And later we're gonna talk about how much you pissed off America. So all right, I'm, all I gotta say is Turkey. If you piss off Greece, you're gonna get burned. So, according, really, Nathan? God damn it! Oh, that was a really disgusting stretch. It wasn't a stretch. According to Greek press reports, 20 Turkish F-16s alongside 19 helicopters entered the Athens Flight Information Region without submitting a flight plan, which means you're not allowed to be there. And they kept doing this over and over and over again. In addition, several Turkish vessels that were part of a maritime exercise entered Greek territorial waters for about 20 minutes. Again, without any notice or plan or saying what they were doing, they just did it. That's fucking scary. So, the, the European Union has said, look, Turkey, quit it. Go home. Stop pushing everyone's buttons and seeing how far you could push your luck. Otherwise, it's going to be bad. They're about to get fucked up. Like, I, Turkey's just pissing everyone off. Like, between all the shit happening in the Middle East and the, just their crazy shit that's been going on. with Shit we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, and uh, the two, three more topics. And then just the shit that they've been doing to their own country. Like, no friends. Turkey has no friends. They probably have some friends. We probably don't like them either because that's the way that that, you know, song and dance goes. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, Three. isn't... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, isn't Russia one of their friends right now? I don't know, and I don't care. Oh. Probably. I think that sounds correct. Okay. Senate Intelligence Committee asked James Comey to testify in public. This was submitted by Fitbit Nitwit to our politics. So we had spoken previously about how the Senate Intelligence Committee had asked James Comey to come and testify as a private citizen. Mm -hmm. And James Comey did respond to that in saying that he would only testify if it was in public because he wants any testimony to be public so that it it's it, it's there it can be seen and it can't be misconstrued by some sort of report or somebody who was in there that decided that they wanted to take some bit of it of their and own liberated you know, yeah, liberation exactly. so and he's like I'm, I, I will testify but only if it's in public now they re-extended a second invitation to him with saying it will be in public he has not responded to it at this time an amended invitation sure either way we'll see what happens i mean there's a lot of information that comey has and i don't know what he can and cannot share but even if he doesn't share the things that would be damning in one regard or another or if they don't exist that would be great too he still has a lot of he, I mean, he was directly involved with a ton of the stuff that's happening and being discussed right now. So there's a lot that he brings to the table, whether it's in a private or a public setting, he needs to be part of it. This is going to be an exciting couple months ahead of us. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we have that and then we have, uh, well, if I can get it in the damn box, then we have this. Two. Democrats call for Trump's impeachment on House floor. This was submitted 10 hours ago by Puns for Life to our politics. Yep, so... That's step one, right? I, I guess. Re uh, Democratic, Republican, uh, Democratic representative um, Al Green from Texas. He has called for President Trump's impeachment on the House floor Wednesday morning, this morning, um, for obstruction of justice. So what he's saying is that you don't have to get a guilty verdict to impeach the president. Just if the legislature if congress believes that the president is unfit and is doing wrong by the country they can remove him and for his recent actions and the things that he has been doing they believe that he well not they this guy believes that he is hurting the country and is trying to get in the way of due process of legal matters it's a largely republican House of Representatives, isn't it? Well, as Zach in the chat room said, if all the Democrats vote to impeach him, they would also need 22 Republicans to also agree. Now, there are multiple Republicans, and by multiple, I mean like seven, that have said that they would be up for considering such an action because he's pissed off a lot of Republicans. But if they pissed can off a lot of people in general. Yeah, but if they, first off, they would need all the Democrats, which, I mean, maybe, I don't want to just automatically say the Democrats would just be like, yeah, but I mean, they probably would because that's how these things go. And they, then they'd be really fighting to get like 10, 15 more Republicans. Well, I mean, if if this whole like Comey thing comes to, to in some form, any fruition, like, I feel like it'll be much easier for it to, to move along. Well, it also depends on what comes from that. Because like we've talked about in the past, like with the different investigations, like with the Russia investigation, there's two outcomes. Either there was a bunch of shady shit going on that is wrong and that sucks, but at least it came to light and it can be worked on being, you know, repercussions being executed as well as, you know, fixing it. Or nothing was wrong and that's okay too because it means that instead of being backstabbing, scheming, asshole shitbags, they're just fucking douchers. Yeah. I don't know. Even then, I don't know if that's uh, as excusable. I mean, it's easier for the, to. Uh, I feel like it would be better if they were just assholes than backstabbing, skeevy, shady assholes. We still have an asshole in president. Either way, or as president, either way, it's not. It's a sh shitty situation. Oh yeah, and even if you impeach Trump, you get Pence. But I mean, at least Pence knows the game and won't be at three up at three a.m. on Twitter just friggin' slam holing people because they insulted his daughter's clothing line. 
That's true. Instead, he'll be slam holding people for wanting to slam hole the same sex. Well, I'm. <laughs> yeah. But if he's not president anymore, it doesn't look nearly as bad. At least I hope. I, I hope that if he is no longer president, we stop. Because, like, right now, when he sends out tweets, he's representing America. If he's no longer president, hopefully that connection is dropped. That just makes me hope that, that Pence is not as big of the devil as I think he is. Well, the problem with Pence is that, specifically for you, is the the stark difference on views. Like, he's a very religious guy, wants religion in the White House. He's very anti-gay. So, I mean, he's you know, he, he's a politician like the politicians that we've had for 20 years, which it means that we won't see a lot of progress and might even see step backs in terms of a free, equal America. But, I mean... That's would happening you, now anyways. Yeah, in some ways it is happening now, and would you rather it be Pence, who won't say the things that Trump does and isn't as large of an embarrassment as Trump is becoming and pissing off other countries, or would you rather have Trump? It's all just not good, man. Well, I mean, if If sucks Britain to suck. can get a snap vote, why can't we get a snap vote? Uh, because our laws are different. It's, oh, God damn it. Because we didn't want to be like Britain. The snap vote, such a good idea. Uh, Andrew in the chat room says, "If you, th if if I think if you get Pence, you will wish you had Trump back." Ah, I maybe. I mean, it depends also on when the change. If he does get impeached, when that impeachment goes through, because right now it's looking. Right now we have a Republican House, but it looks like that'll quickly change to a Democrat House after the 2018 elections. And you if think so. I, that's what the current prediction anyway if people can get up and vote yeah but so i mean if the house does change control from one party to the other and then you have a republican president but a democratic house then it just freezes nothing happens because everyone's saying no to one another mm -hmm. i mean so i mean in which case you just get you know at that point, it'd be six more, well, two more years, maybe six more years of just a bunch of nothing happening. I feel like after this, it might just be two years. Maybe. I don't, I, I don't see Trump getting reelected, but if Trump gets impeached and then Pence becomes president and even does a halfway decent job for the Republicans, I could see him getting reelected. I can see him going back up for the the... GOP nomination. It is also it, right. It yeah. It yeah. also heavily depends on who his opponent is, and not just for the on for the Republicans, but also on the Democrat side. Like if the Democrats throw Hillary Clinton up, I I fully believe without a doubt that Pence will get elected if he is one of the choices. Yeah, they really need to stop with that. Yeah, Hillary is borderline unelectable because if you're, if you're trying to throw up a woman that's a Democrat, throw up like Nancy Pelosi or Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, Warren could probably get elected. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if Bernie Sanders will go up again. Maybe. I mean, he could probably get elected, especially because he still has such a large support base even after he's not in the election anymore. So, maybe. I don't know. It also depends on what the DNC does because we have proof now that the DNC did affect the primary election in such a way to ensure that Clinton was their candidate. And but now the DNC has had drastic restructuring. So what does that mean in terms of the next election? Well, a lot of people aren't going to factor in that drastic re restructuring. They're going to just look at it and be like, "Oh, those guys, those guys tried to cheat last time." Maybe who knows? And also, I mean, it'll also depend on what comes from the Russia investigation. If it is proven that Russia did have a large. I, say is not the right word a large effect on the election because of their involvement whether in trump's campaign or just with the gop in general then that could lead to other things as well right yeah no this is god and we thought 2016 was bad well i mean here, here's the thing is that what like 2016 was like, you know, the, the the bomb going off. And then you have all of the fallout to deal with. And that's what 2017 is right now, is dealing with are all you of saying, the damage. Are you saying how we are dealing with a bunch of celebrity deaths is by having shitty politics? Uh, I'm saying that politics were really shitty last year, and they are continuing to try to fix themselves afterwards. 
I feel like last year wasn't shitty because of politics. Last year was shitty because of of a bunch of people dying, including America. That's the matter of perspective and priority, sir. I, it's what you think is important. I don't know. I feel like it's it's uh, it's a majority vote here. Sure. One. Turkish president's bodyguards batter Washington, D.C. protesters, leaving them covered in blood while leader meets Trump at the White House. This was submitted by 7,000... Or 75,000 total to our world news. Realize I didn't vet the, t the headline on this one, even though this is the headline that this links to, but I really dislike this headline because it's so damn grabby. Anyway, so what happened was, and this is a little bit very accurate and also a little bit inaccurate. The meeting had already concluded and the Turkish president, Mr. Erdogan, had was in the process of leaving the White House. This is when a fight broke out between a bunch of protesters protesting the Turkish president against the bodyguards that were defending the president's stuff as well as the White House. Um, but it was a very peaceful protest until something happened. We don't know exactly what yet that caused the initial conflict. So, but... Then the president, Turkish president's bodyguards started beating the ever living shit out of the protesters. Like yep. people down on the ground, covering their heads in the fetal position while these bodyguards just continuously kick into them like it's a goddamn street brawl in the back alley of Brooklyn. Some crazy shit right there. Multiple people have been sent to the hospital. A couple people have been arrested. The State Department is now working on IDing the bodyguards who beat up the protesters, especially the ones that were the most aggressive in this, because there's not this. This isn't what you're. That's not your job. You're not supposed to beat the shit out of people. You're supposed to keep the person that is paying you safe. That does not mean beat the crap out of American citizens on their own soil. Like wars have been started over shit smaller than this. Yeah, that's that's some serious shit to go down right now. Especially I, since everyone still hates you, Turkey. Yeah, and you continue to make less and less friends. Yeah. Meanwhile, Erdogan and, and, and Trump had a great time, right? We don't know much about what that meeting was or how things are going. I'm sure that they're fucking buddies, though. Probably. Trump is, like, friends with all the people we don't want to be friends with and just yeah. pisses off the friends we do have. It's really unfortunate because I really enjoy the friends that we did have. Did have. Sadness. Got to use yeah. got to use that past tense on there. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Just looking at you. Me seats. Look at me. Nathan, what did you care about in the last 24 hours? All right. Today. Yes. If you start watching... One episode of Game of Thrones per day, starting today, you'll be all caught up by the time Season 7 premieres. Okay. Now, if you read one page of A Song of Ice and Fire per day, starting today, you'll be all caught up in time for the release of The Winds of Winter. Um, well... That's 5,000 pages, which is about 13 years. That's depressing as hell. Which, I mean, you might be right is the even sadder part. <laughs> right. What year did A Song of Ice and Fire come out? Uh, 2001, I think. Was it that recent? Because with the way that people joke about how long it takes him to release a book, I feel like it had to have been like 1980. No. I, I know it's not actually the first. The first couple were quicker. Oh, okay, I was a little off. Uh, Game of Thrones came out in 1996. Oh, okay, so it's 21 years old now. I can drink. Mm -hmm. So you're saying I need to watch Game of Thrones? Yeah. Oh. But uh, I don't want to. <laughs> well, how long I, is I, it? How long is an episode without the commercials or anything like that in there? Like 40 minutes? Uh, about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have to watch it after the kid goes to sleep, though. Oh, yeah. Trust me. I know. Yeah. The problem is, though, is that Monday through Thursday, after the kid goes to sleep, I do this. All right, guys. It was a good show, everybody. Well, we'll, uh, we'll start back up after after A Song of Ice, or uh, after Game of Thrones Season 7 comes out. God damn it, Nathan. Uh. Ah!
I will try to start watching it at some point. I know it's probably one of those shows, though, that, like, as soon as I start watching it, I'll want to keep watching it. I just have to fucking start, and I keep on finding really bad reasons not to. I also play a lot of video games. So, yeah. Anyway, what did I care about in the last 24 hours? Um, I don't know. You know what I cared about? I cared about finding a better job. As, as like, sad as that sounds, like, so I have a, a okay job. It it could definitely be worse, but it could definitely be better. And I've been there for, right now, uh, I am a month away from being there for three years. Two months away from, from being there for three years. And I'm real ready to do something different. Um, and I keep applying for shit, but I keep on getting interviews for shit, but I keep on not getting job offers. And it's very frustrating. But I know that there's a lot of people that are interviewing for these, and they can only pick one. I just, I, 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 I wish they would pick me, damn it. Yeah, I, I guess I can understand that. I don't know. Every time I look for a job, the one that I want, I usually just got. Yeah, and see, that's been pretty normal for me, too. But now that I'm in a more professional field looking for more professional jobs that pay more money, it's a lot harder. Well, I mean, this is what I'm telling you. You got to stop. You got to build up a talent that nobody else has. Aw, thanks, Zach. Zach says he'd pick me blacksmithing dude if it was more feasible i would totally get into blacksmithing but that's like a a massive investment because like you gotta that, that there isn't like oh start out small no you need everything right at the very beginning build your own forge i'm uh hasn't yeah yeah fucking swan's done it just sit down with josh yeah josh also had a house i'm in an apartment do it on your balcony. <laughs> that sounds probably against my rental agreement. Oh, so last night I tuned into the um, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood thing. Was it amazing? Uh, I tuned in on an episode where he had a glass blower on, so they put on a flame and blew some glass swans. That's cool. And that shit was amazing, and I ended up falling asleep watching it. Good job. Waking up at, I woke up at like 4, and my... My ass was completely asleep from my chair, and I was sitting there. It was still going on, and I was just like, I miss you. We all miss him. True. All right. Anyway. Andrew in the Andrew Walter in the chat room says he can see me working the giant bills. Dude, I'd love to do blacksmithing stuff. That'd be Dude, awesome. Dude, all right, yeah, let's quit. Let's do blacksmithing. I want to do blacksmithing. Like... I can't tell you how jealous I am of the people that have a full shop and then are also not only making money from the shop, but also making money from, like, videos that they put out from their shop. Like, man, I would love to just sit there and hammer iron with, like, some music blaring. Like, that'd be great. You probably wouldn't be listening to music. Yeah, I know. But, uh... I mean, depends. Get these yeah, new, I guess it... Get these new fancy Dash Pro earbuds. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Anyway, let's get the hell yeah, out of here. Well, you, I was gonna say you could do you could do uh, uh, iron smithing, and I'm, and I'll be a Fletcher. All right, we'll just have our own little armory that we sell things out of. Yeah, let's bring it back. I mean, this would be a good place to do so. I mean, because like, got a lot of open space up here. I mean, as long as you can also make knives. Yeah. What Northern knives is really. Well, I mean, there's that place that's down on your way to, like, Homer and stuff that have their own little shack. They got a full forge in there. That thing is cool. Yeah, exactly. Especially, like, with modern technology, the th the things that you can do, like, with the friggin' uh, goddamn pneumatic jackhammers, those Dude, are... You could, be... you could be, like, Gendry. Gendry? Gendry. I don't know what that is. He's a guy from Game of Thrones you would know if you fucking watched the show! <laughs> Hmm. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Everybody, uh, if you would like to help support the show, the first thing we ask is you go check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash daily internet, or follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of that's at iReditCast. Follow me at Schwan Michael and Nathan at Bimenstein on most social media. Um, go ahead and just uh, give us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, whatever you're listening to it on. If you're not listening to our live stream, um, five-star reviews helps it visibility a lot when people look for a new show. Otherwise, we do go live Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Specific Daylight Time. <laughs> and, yeah, so just uh, there's plenty of places that you could find this show if you're not happy with where you're finding it right now. Otherwise, though, that is your 289th dose of the Internet. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. And... Don't get
good. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. Bye.